Hey guys, here you can see a 1,200 year old carving. You can see a lingam in the middle that is surrounded by two intertwined nagas. What is the real meaning of this? What is the connection between the lingam and these double helix strands? In the same temple, you can see this carving, a man wearing a weird hat. His ears are gigantic and his nose is also unusually large. You may think he's just doing namaste, but he's not. He's actually displaying a cylindrical object in between his hands. The thing between his hands is long enough that he's unable to join both the hands. He's definitely doing some important work because look at his legs. He's wearing very thick shoes. Look at his shoulder. He's not bare chested. He's wearing a tight suit. And why have ancient builders highlighted that thing specifically? What is this thin cylinder between his hands eerily reminding us of a test tube or a glass vial? What is inside this? Maybe the answer is found right about the carving itself. Is this a single cell with a nucleus inside? I will be more specific. Is it a human egg cell or an ovum? If you compare this carving to a human egg cell, the similarity is striking. Is it possible that they were performing genetic engineering in ancient times? But perhaps this is just one odd carving that happens to be coincidentally carved here, right? No, the temple is full of such carvings, oddly resembling exiles. Once we start to observe carefully, these carvings are found everywhere. And we know in many ancient Hindu temples, we can see carvings of sperms. Sometimes the sperms are clearly shown swimming towards the exile and fertilizing it. In other carvings, we can even see a group of sperms swimming, racing against one another. Are all these things mere coincidences or did ancient builders actually understand genetic modification? Perhaps the answer lies in this temple itself. There is a specific corner in this temple called the Naga corner. This is dedicated to Nagas, the gods of fertility. When you look casually, it looks like a random array of statues. But if you look carefully at the back row, you will see intertwined snakes strongly resembling the double helix structure of DNA. And in the front, you will see human-like figures emerging out of these so-called snakes. How can humans emerge out of actual snakes? Or ancient builders telling us about humans and their DNA? Why does this ancient temple at Thirumayam in South India have these strange carvings? Of course, we have to go back to the very first question. What's the connection between DNA and lingam? In a previous video about the same temple, I showed you the mystery of the cosmic egg and how Lord Shiva may have landed here using this lingam as a pod. Is it possible that Shiva brought this advanced technology of DNA manipulation and genetic engineering to our planet. When ancient texts mention that gods created many varieties of plants and animals, were they actually talking about altering the DNA of various species? The carvings in this area are weird. You can see intertwined nagas, a single exile, a strange twisted blob, which I will explain later, and here you can see two fish kissing one another. This is actually a display of territorial aggression, much like how two sperms compete to fertilize the ovum. I find it fascinating that ancient builders not only carved microscopic things like sperms, eggs, and DNA, 
but also focused on a macro level, like reproductive behavior of animals and humans. You can see carvings of various behaviors like courtship, motherhood, aggression, conflict, and symbiotic relationship between two animals. And I can show you on and on. But they're not just carved for beauty. They're accurate images where you can read the animal behavior like pictures in a biology book. For example, let's take motherhood. This is just a calf drinking milk from its mother. But look carefully, what does the cow do? The cow is shown allogrooming. Wait, allogrooming? What is that? Modern zoologists have coined a fancy term for licking. They call this allogrooming. But you can see how it is accurately depicted in this 1,200-year-old carving. And it is so fascinating that when I filmed this cow today, can you see any difference? The calf is eagerly drinking milk from the cow while the mother is fondly licking the calf. The carving is almost a photograph that can be used in today's zoology book. In fact, it is better than a photograph or a painting because it is still standing after 1,200 years. But the question is, why did ancient builders document this animal behavior so accurately? Of course, you can say, come on, man. Sculpting is an art form like painting. The artist saw this and carved it for beauty. If so, why is the same calf carved on top? Why is it carved separately, again, with no activity, just showing its external anatomy? You can clearly see it is a calf, not a full-grown cow or a bull. Was it also just carved for beauty? And this lack of attention to detail about connecting the dots is our problem. Here, the peacock has started to eat the snake. Here, it is almost finished eating. Here, you can see an elephant showing its aggression on a flat post. Here, you can see a much larger animal showing its aggression on an elephant but not an elephant. This is the same elephant that was angry in the other carving. Look at this armor. This is not a coincidence. The ancient builders are giving us valuable information and we haven't understood even 1% of these carvings. If I can understand this from analyzing a handful of carvings from this temple, imagine what we can do if we do a full-scale research and analysis. This information is the real treasure hidden in temples. This is better than gold and diamonds. Why are some animals aggressive while others are passive? If we dig deeper, we realize it's mostly because of the genetic code or DNA. The major factor is not the size or circumstances. An animal like a stoat can chase and kill a rabbit that is 10 times its size. The rabbit still tries to run, and even though there are so many rabbits nearby, they don't do anything about it. This is all because of God's work or DNA manipulation. We can see many weird hybrid animal and humanoid species in this temple. Until now, we have been dismissing them as pure imagination. Is it possible that these were genetically engineered species? Here, we can see a lion, except it's not actually a lion. I'm only calling it a lion because that's the closest species I can think of. The round popping eyes, the nose, almost a human nose, and a huge mouth with a very odd shape. But look carefully, it does not have ears or earlobes. And of course, you can think that we cannot add human-like nose or ears to another animal. But that's not true. 
This mouse is a real mouse with a human-like ear on its back. A great researcher by the name of Vacanti from Harvard Medical School was able to do this tissue engineering using stem cells. They call this the Vacanti mouse. This was done in 1996, that is 25 years ago. So imagine how advanced we are now. Actually, genetic engineering became so advanced that they introduced a bill in the US Congress in 2005. It's called the Human Chimera Prohibition Act, preventing anyone from creating a hybrid of a human and another animal. So today, scientists can create a human hybrid with wings if permitted by law. But were they also doing the same during ancient times? Are these carvings actually showing human chimeras? Are these genetically modified species? If so, can we find more evidence of this? Just look about this animal. What do you think? Is it also an egg cell? But it doesn't look like a cell because it has multiple concentric circles, doesn't it? We normally think an egg cell has an outer membrane and one nucleus at the center. But look at this egg cell of a cat. It is surprising because again, you can see multiple concentric circles. Is it a coincidence that we see such a carving about this genetically modified animal? Or does it mean something completely different? But we're not able to understand some of the carvings at all in the temple. Look at this one, just a complex blob with many beads and strings. We can find many such weird carvings in this temple. Here's another one. It looks similar, but it's not identical. This is not an animal or a human. Nobody in this place, not even the priest of this temple, is able to explain these carvings. They will just call it a beautiful, meaningless pattern. But it's not even that beautiful. Why are they found all over the temple? What do these weird things mean? When we talk about DNA, we normally think they're just double helix strands. But today, we're able to analyze them deeper and deeper, and it's actually much more complex. When we magnify more and more, everything just looks like beads and strands everywhere with no rhyme or reason. It doesn't look beautiful, there's no symmetry, and it's very difficult to explain it, just like these carvings. Are these carvings actually showing us a magnified version of DNA and protein? If not, what do they mean? What's the meaning of the lingam inside these double helical strands? Why did ancient builders accurately record the behavior of animals? Is he holding a test tube? And is this an egg cell? Most importantly, are we humans, natural beings, or were we genetically engineered? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.